page 120, victory. Do you have victory? Stand with us and let's sing. Let's get cranking. Page 120. Many of you ever lived in a log, a real old log house, not a not a new one. Don, me and Don. <laughs> right, there we go. I can't see who that is back there. <laughs> well, anyhow, we got a mansion, don't we? Thank God. I heard about a mansion. Let's gather around. This is prayer time, and lot to pray for, lot to praise God. Old brother Don's here, Don Bingham, and I'm telling you, he's been through it. We have others that we really need to pray. Brother Aubrey Gable's in the hospital, and we love, love that fella. And we love you, and I knew you got lots of requests. Sing it on the last. Well, I heard about it. Oh, man.
tonight. Good to see all of you. It's our prayer meeting time. So if you have a prayer request or praise report, we'll give that in. And we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Who wants to be first? I know Sister Linda's doing a little bit better. So let's do, continue to pray for Linda Draudy. And um, who else am I talking about? Brett? And Brother Aubrey, let's do make sure we remember Brother, you know, Brother Gable, they're, they're a blessing. We got yes. to pray for Brother Aubrey Amen. Gable. Linda? Yes, Rob. All right, let's remember her. Dot. Mm -hmm. All right, let's remember that request. Yes, Larry. Remember Betty in our prayers. Yes. All right. Let's remember the family. Any others? Yes. Okay. God bless you. All bless right. Let's heart. remember her in prayer. Yes. Yes. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. Yes. Bless you, Frank. All right. Got to see Ruby today. Ruby's doing much better. So Amen. let's remember her. Continue to remember her in our prayers. Yes. Bless God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Not right. only did she go to Cracker Barrel for dinner, I went at lunchtime and she was eating Chinese food watching television. Ah, yes. So I that is good it. news. That is I good news. It. It's encouraging. God encouraging to see you. her up and about. So continue oh, to remember yes. Marzi in our prayers. Yes. Any others? Yes. Amen. All right, remember her. Yes. All right. Any others? Yes. Prayer tonight. 
Any others? Any unspoken requests? You'll raise your hand. All the will gather around the altar for prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Let go.
That's the Parson family you ready to sing for us. I think they're heading out pretty soon. So let's take an offering up for them and make get them some gas money. How about that? Those buses take a lot of gas. So we want to do that. Listen, tonight, if you'd like to write a check to the Parsons, uh, that'd be great. Miss Pat's not here. She's on a cruise. And so uh, if you'd like to write a check, just make it out to the Parson family or uh, they'll take cash too. Amen. Brother Tom, pray for us tonight. to say tonight but thank you I'm terrible at goodbyes and I'll probably start crying when it comes time to leave Sorry, babe. you all have been so kind to us and um, I guess Hoy wrote it best just to tell you that I love you and I appreciate you it's like going home to mom and daddy's house and having to say goodbye and I'd always cry so hard I couldn't even talk to Kenny when we left I was so mad at him for moving me away from mom <laughs> But I love you, and I know we only get to see some of you just once a year, but I want you to know that you have had such a great impact on our ministry. There's some pastors that call us sometimes that have only seen us online, and, and they'll say, you've been to the church there in Sifner, Florida, and I'll say, yes, and they say, that's all we need to know. They say, if they've had you, we know that we can trust you to come, and so you've helped our ministry in so many ways that I just don't have enough time to tell you just how much I love you. I appreciate you. This work has got to go on. And I was telling Chloe today, why the Lord chose us to do this, I'll never know. But maybe it was because a little girl one time knelt at the altar and said, yes, Lord, I'll go. If you can use me, Lord, I'll go. So tonight we can't quit. And that's the title of this song that we just recorded. Just simply says that we can't quit. So, so Tampa Church, please don't quit. Don't quit what you're doing. You're making an impact on so many people. Every little group that you bring in here, we walk away from it just so full. I love to come and sing for you. I truly do. One of my favorite crowds. But can I tell you, I love to glean from, from all the messages and watch you and and you've taught me to give, and you've taught me to pray more. You've taught me so many things, and I love you. I'm gonna let Olivia sing before I break down even more, but please pray for us as we hit the road on Saturday. If you have no one else to pray for, we sure need it. Jeremiah said, Lord, you've deceived me, and Lord, you've done me wrong. I've been out here praying faithfully it seems you've left me all alone so I said I'll not speak or mention your name at all oh but your word was like a fire burning in my bones oh I can't quit when there's a fire burning Sometimes I want to lay it down, but he gives me strength to carry on. I know out on this battlefield, sometimes we'll face defeat, but I can't quit when there's a fire burning in me. So many. 
sword they've grown weary in this battle that we are fighting for our lord oh but when i think of what he did on the cross of calvary i lift up the blood Kenny's ever played this, but I love this old song. I've never been so homesick before. I, I was telling folks about midway of this trip, I'll get a homesick. Actually, Chloe and I were talking about it today, and we're homesick already, and it's just been a few weeks, but um, I'm looking forward to going back to Harwood Drive, but should the Lord come, I'm getting ready to go home to, to heaven. Amen. Aren't you looking forward to that? You all know this old Dottie Rambo song. Let's sing it together before we go.
Genesis chapter 6. Appreciate the Parson family. And be praying for them as they're traveling. Genesis chapter 6. How many are still tired from camp meeting? Had a good time, didn't we? Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 6. Stand with us. Because I saw about four of you dozing off during the singing. So I want to wake you back up. God's been good to you. Say amen. Yeah. Amen. Genesis chapter 6. We're going to start a new series of messages on Wednesday night, next five or six weeks, we're going to be looking at uh, Bible windows, uh, the different windows you find throughout Bible passages, and so we'll be getting into that and telling you a little bit more about it. Genesis chapter 6, begin reading in verse number 14, the Bible says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, and room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. And a window, there's that word, a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. Thank you to... Be in your house one more time. Lord, we thank you again for all the folks here that worked last week so tirelessly and endlessly. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you blessed us last week uh, with souls that were saved and many refreshed and brought closer to the Lord. Be with us tonight, Lord, for a few moments. Help us to speak to hearts, Lord, and your Holy Spirit move, we pray. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. I was recently reading about some of the worst storms in history uh, there was one in 1926, and it was a storm that hit Florida and Alabama. And this storm, think of this, in 1926 caused $1.2 billion in damage, uh, leaving the city of Miami devastated. 372 people died in that storm. Uh, there was a storm in 1937. It was on Labor Day. It struck uh, the northern part of Florida. It started in the Florida Keys, went up to the northern part of Florida. And uh, it also uh, left 400 people dead. It was the most powerful storm ever to strike the United States in one of only two Category 5 storms to do so. Uh, there was one in 1947. It was a storm that hit... Uh, northern Florida and Georgia left 50 people dead. And that storm caused the worst flooding on record. And there are many others that I could name that, that some you may remember. If you remember Hurricane David, 1979. How about Hurricane Andrew, uh, 1992. Opal in 1995. There was Hurricane Ivan in 2004. And if you remember Hurricane Katrina in, in 2005. But understand... All of those storms put together would not have the effect of the storm in Noah's day. These storms that I told you about, they affected certain states. But the storm of Noah's day, it affected the entire world. For the next few weeks, I want us to look through several Bible windows. And there are several windows found in the Bible. And as we look through these windows, I believe there are lessons that can be learned that address many areas and, and many needs in our lives. And so the first window I want to bring to your attention tonight is the window of Noah's Ark. In verses 14 through 16, we just read of God giving Noah some instructions to build an ark. And God instructed Noah concerning both the materials and the measurements of the ark. God told Noah to build the ark of gopher wood. We have no idea what gopher wood is today. We know as to the measurements, the ark was 450 feet long, 70 feet wide, 45 feet high. But then we see several features of the ark are mentioned. In verse 14, it mentions rooms. He says, rooms shall thy make in the ark. So there were rooms in the ark. 
It is also described as having three stories or, or three decks. At the end of verse 16, it says, With lower and second and third story shalt thou make it. We are then told there was one door in its side. In the middle of verse 16, The door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. But then we see that there was a window. And this window was placed in the top of the ark. At the end of verse 16, it says, A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. Now we all here tonight know the purpose of the ark was to provide a place of shelter, a a place of safety, a place of security for Noah and his family from the flood that destroyed all mankind. So we read in Genesis 7, verse 7, And Noah went in, and his sons... And his wife and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. So it's the storm of Noah that he found himself in that that I want to make the emphasis of my my message tonight. And, And I know that the storm was an act of God's judgment upon the sinfulness of mankind in Noah's day. But nonetheless, Noah found himself in a storm. So tonight I want us to look at at the storm through the window of the ark. It may be that some of you here tonight, you're in a storm. The winds are howling, the water is rising in your life. If so, I want to invite you to look with me through this window of the ark. And I want to give you three suggestions concerning this window. First of all, I want us to look out of the ark. And as we do so, think of how looking out can shake our faith. See, when we look out, we see the rain falling and the the waters rising and the people all screaming and, and we see a storm all around us. And the storm Noah found himself in reminds us of storms that we often face. Look in chapter 7, verse 17. It says, And the flood was forty days upon the earth. And the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Listen, folks, this was a storm of gigantic proportions. The truth is, there has never been another storm like this storm. And when I think of Noah in this storm, I'm reminded that believers often find themselves in storms. Just because you're a believer of Jesus Christ does not mean you will not have storms in your life. And there are several things that I think of when I think of storms. I think of how extended our storms can be. You ever been in a storm and you say, hey God, how long are you going to keep me here in this storm? Hey, hey God, when are you going to get me out of this thing? Well, look at Noah. The Bible says the flood was 40 days upon the earth. You think after about day 10 or 20, Noah had enough of the rain? But understand, our storms may last a few days or for several months or even in some cases reach into years. In the case of Noah, we read in chapter 7, verse 24, And the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. How would you like to have been in that ark for 150 days? We see how extended our storms may be. We also see how extensive our storms may be. The Bible says that the waters increased and increased greatly. Then it says the water prevailed and prevailed exceedingly. The Bible says the hills were completely covered. Eventually, all the mountains were completely covered. It said at least 15 cubits over the tallest mountain. You know how high that is? The water was 25 feet higher than the highest mountain peak in this world. And just like that storm Noah was in, our storms can come with deep waters. And they can come leaving us to feel like we're drowning in difficulty and distress. Think of how expansive our storms can be. Look at the storm in Noah's life, Genesis 7, verse 17. The flood was 40 days upon the earth. That means upon the entire earth. 
There was not one square inch of earth that was not covered in water. And understand, our storms too can be expansive. Storms come in many different ways, cover many different areas, affecting our life from all different directions. You're here tonight, you may be in a financial storm. You may be in a a physical storm, maybe a, a marital or a material storm, maybe a combination of all the storms. Our storms can come with great adversity. And I would say most, if not all, in this place tonight have learned that life is not always sunny days and clear skies. Can I get a witness? There are storms that we often face that bring dark clouds and stormy days. So the storm Noah found himself in reminds us of things we often face. It also reminds us of how we often feel. You know, we're never told exactly what Noah's inner thoughts were when this storm came on. Now, knowing that God was behind it, did he face the storm with calm? Did he face the storm with confidence? Or was he like most of us? Boy, I hope God knows what he's doing. I'm not sure about this gopher wood. I'd have probably chosen pine or maybe oak. Did he have to bring two of every animal in this ark? I mean, those snakes over there, I'm really not liking those things. Take those cats and put them up on the third story. (laughs) I'm not too sure about this, God. I can promise you on more than one occasion, someone has said to me, Preacher, I'm not sure I really understand what God is up to. And it may be that some of you have been in a storm that left you feeling helpless and hopeless and asking questions. Makes me think of the story, true story of the S-4 submarine. It was accidentally rammed by another ship when it was above the water and it quickly sank. And the entire crew is trapped in this submarine. One of the passengers called it a prison house of death. How would you like to be at the bottom of the ocean in a submarine that can't float? Said ships rushed to the scene of the disaster off the coast of Massachusetts. When a diver finally reached the submarine, he got right up beside the vessel and listened. And he heard heard tapping noises. Someone was tapping out a question in Morse code, and the question came slowly. Is there any hope? Now, thankfully, they were all saved. But the storms of life can leave us asking the same question. Lord, is there any hope? Where I find myself here tonight, Lord, is there any hope? I feel like I'm in a pit, and it's dark all around. Is there any hope? Because I want you to know, the storms of life, it can shake our faith. You think you have strong faith in God? You just let a storm come your way. And it fills us with doubt. It fills us with fear. Because when we look out, we see the storm, and looking out can shake our faith. But now I want you to look inside. And secondly, as you do, I want you to see how looking inside can settle our faith. Now, now you're saying, wait a second, I think I'd rather be on the inside looking out. Remember the song Grandma and them used to say? (laughs) Rather than on the outside looking in. But understand, in our first look, we went inside the ark and we looked out and we saw the storm. But in our second look, I want to take you outside the ark and look in. And as we look in, as we do, we take our eyes off the storm behind us and we look inside. And guess who's inside with Noah and his family? The Lord is. I want you to notice something that really blessed me as I studied it. Notice carefully in Genesis chapter 7 what God said to Noah in verse number 1. Read this a hundred times and you have too, but it never hit me till I saw it. Now watch this. It says in verse 1, And the Lord said, who's talking? The Lord. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou... And all thy house into the ark. Notice carefully, God did not say, Noah, go thou into the ark. Noah, get inside the ark. No, you know what he said? Noah, come thou into the ark. Come on in to the ark. 
If you go to someone's house, you knock on the door and they answer that door and they invite you to come on in, that means you're going into a place they already are. You get that? It hit me today and I'm telling you, it just blessed my heart. He said, Noah, come thou into the ark. Folks, that indicates God was already inside the ark waiting on them to come in. God was simply inviting Noah and his family to join him. Yes, Noah found himself in a storm, but listen, he was not alone. The Lord was with him. The Lord was waiting in that ark during the storm. And I want to remind you, when you go through the darkest storm of your life, the Lord's right there with you. In fact, the Lord's already there. Isaiah 41, 10, one of my favorite verses. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. One Sunday morning, an instructor in a theological school was sharing a seat with a small boy on a shuttle train, and the boy was holding a Sunday school lesson leaflet. The man asked in a friendly way, he said, do you go to Sunday school, son? The boy answered, yes, sir, yes, sir, I do. He said, thinking just to have a little fun with him, he said, well, 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 tell me. Tell me where God is, and I'll give you an apple. The little boy looked up at him, and he replied, sir? Tell me where God ain't, and I'll give you a whole barrel of apples. (laughs) See, God is always present. He's always with us. And you can be sure that when you're in the darkest storm of your life, He is right there beside you, guiding you through the storm. So in Genesis chapter 7, God invites them in. But now notice in Genesis chapter 8, the storm is now over. Been almost a full year. The time's come for Noah and his family to leave the ark. When we read the ark, look at verse 15. Words are important in the Bible, church. Verse 15, and God spake unto Noah, saying, what? (laughs) Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy son's wife with thee. Notice, God did not say, hey, Noah, come out. But what? Hey, Noah, get out. Go forth. Why? Because God was still in the ark with them when it landed. He had been with Noah through the entire storm. And just as he was with Noah through the entire storm, he'll be with you. He'll be there. There'll never be a moment when he'll leave you in that storm. So looking out, it can shake your faith. And and looking in, it can settle your faith. But there's one final look I, I want you to take with me. Thirdly, I want you to look up and see how looking up, it can strengthen our faith. The final look that I I want you to take is through the window of the ark. That's why we're here. We're we're looking at these windows. Notice once again, Genesis chapter 6, verse 16. It says, A window shall thou make to the ark, and in a cubit... Shall thou finish it where? Above. Now get this. There was only one window in that entire ark. And the only way they could look out of the ark was through that window. So in closing, I want you to look through this window with me. I believe if we will look Through this window, like Noah did, in our storms, it will be of great benefit to us when we're in our storm. Now let me explain. Did you notice where this window was placed in the ark? Genesis chapter 6 verse 16 tells us the window was finished above. That is, the window was not placed on the side of the ark like all the little pictures show us in our little kids' stories. Your kids have a little toy. I know we used to have one in the nursery. It was of Noah's Ark, and there was that one window on the side. That's not what it says here. 
The Bible says it was placed in the top of the ark. And because the window was above, to look out this window, you have to look where? You have to look up. Noah could not look out and see all the chaos around him. When fear set in, he could only look up. I love what A.W. Pink says about this window. It says, Noah and his companions were not to be looking down on the scene of destruction beneath and all around them, but up toward the living God. May I say that it should always come to that. Especially when we find ourselves in the storm. We should be looking up. We should look up to God with faith and with trust. Love that old story Tony Evans tells about he and his wife, Lois. They went on, a, on one of those cruises. He said, we were out there and all of a sudden the, a voice came over the intercom in their room and they said, we want you to really uh, uh, hunker down and hold on because because we're getting ready to go through a storm. It's, it's, it's pretty rough out there, so just be ready. It's going to be a little rough on the, the, the sailing here. And he said, Lois didn't like that one bit. So he said, they had this intercom button that calls the front. And he said, I, I want to speak. She wants to speak to the head guy. The guy said, you can't speak to him. He's right. She said, he said, it doesn't matter, my wife wants to talk to him. So they sent her down the, the hall to this phone. He said, we're sitting there, and this uh, second class mate comes on. He can't get the actual guy driving the boat, but they get him. And, and she said, now, now let me get this straight. There's a storm taking place, and we're going to go through it. Why don't we just put the anchor down, stop the boat, wait till the storm goes by when it's by, then we'll go through it. He said, all right, ma'am, I'll, I'll tell the captain your questions and I'll get right back with you. He said the phone rang like 30 seconds. He said these words. He, he said, ma'am, the captain wanted me to tell you two things. Number one, he's the captain and you're not. <laughs> and he said, number two, he wanted me to tell you that this ship was built with this storm in mind. Folks, I want you to know, whatever storm you find yourself in tonight, Jesus Christ died, was buried, rose again from the dead, sits at the right hand of the Father. And whatever storm you're going through, hey, he'll ride that ship with you because he took it all away when he came forth from the dead. He has your storm in mind. So they could only look up. Let me point out a second benefit that comes from looking through this window. Not only do we read that there was one window and that it was in the top of the ark requiring them to look up, but we also see it was a very small window. Genesis chapter 6 verse 16 tells us it was to be in a cubit. So this single window was a square window that measured a cubit in width and length. Now, we don't measure things in cubits anymore, but a, a cubit was commonly believed to be the length from your elbow up to your middle finger, which is normally about 18 inches. I think you would agree with me that an 18-inch square window was not a very big window for such a big ship. But because it was such a small window, it narrowed and limited what they could see out the window. See, it was not a, a large bay window in the side of the ship that gave them a panoramic view of what was going on around them because it was at the top. They could not look around. They could only look above. And because it was so small, there was very little they could see. And what I'm saying is this. The size of the window restricted their view. You might say that Noah's focus was narrowed. This small window reminds us that when we are going through a storm, we are to narrow our focus. We're not to look at the storm around us. We're not to look at the circumstances taking place all around us. We're to keep our eyes narrowly focused on the Lord. Do you remember when Peter stepped out of the water? Only two people have ever walked on water in the history of the universe, and, and they were Peter and Jesus. 
and he's walking on the water. Do you remember? When did he begin to sing? When he took his eyes off of Jesus and put them on the storm around him. Church, when you're going through a storm, Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on what he says in his word. Get your eyes on his many promises and get them off your surroundings. Because the devil's going to lie and he's going to exaggerate everything that you're going through. I wonder if it's what Helen Limmel had in mind in 1922 when she wrote these words. Listen. Oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And I love these, these words. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Get your eyes off your circumstances. Get your eyes on the Savior. Never forgotten a story I heard about a, a young lady that was going to the mission field. And on the day that she was departing, just before she boarded the ship that would carry her to the, the place of God's call in her life, someone walked up to her and handed her an envelope and said, if you ever get to the place where you have nowhere else to turn or nowhere else to turn to, Open this envelope. More than 30 years later, she's back in the States. She's giving her testimony at a church. As she did so, she reached into her Bible. She pulled out the envelope that had been given to her more than 30 years before. It had never been opened. She told the story of how it had been given to her with the words, if you ever get to the place where you have nowhere else to turn or, or no one else to turn to, open this envelope. She looked at the people before her in that church and she said, Church, I just want you to know, there's never been a time when I had nowhere to turn. There's never been a time where I had no one to turn to. My Lord Jesus has always been there. So I remind you tonight, whatever place you find yourself in, I want to remind you, you'll never get to the place where you have nowhere to turn or no one to turn to. We just read it tonight. You know what we're to do? Look up. Keep our focus narrow. Get your eyes off the circumstances around you and put your situation in the hand of the Lord and depend on Him. Amen? So we stand together, heads bowed and eyes closed. So get a song of invitation. Maybe you're here tonight, you find yourself in a storm. So many things happening in your life. They're coming from all sides. You don't understand it, and you're asking God, when's it going to stop? You're looking for some relief. Let's do like the writer told us. Let's turn our eyes on Jesus. You're here tonight, heads are bowed, eyes are closed, and you just say, I, I'm in a storm. I'm going through some things right now. And I need you to pray for me. Would there be one? Just slip your hand up by that saying, pray for me. Bless those hands. I, I'm in a storm tonight. It, it could be financial. Bless those hands. It could be physical, material, marital, all, all kinds of different storms. If you're here tonight, you want to be remembered in prayer. Would there be others? Just slip your hand. Bless those hands. Bless those hands. I wonder how many tonight have loved ones who are unsaved. They need Jesus. You want to remember them in prayer. Bless all the hands. We're going to have a word of prayer. And if you feel led, the altars are always open. Would you step out and come? There'll be someone to pray with you. We'll go through that storm together. Lord, we love you, God. We thank you for your word. Thank you for the example tonight of Noah. So many tonight who raised their hand. Lord, you know each and every heart and what storm they're facing. God, I pray that you would be with them through that storm. We know you've already said you would. If any need to pray tonight for whatever reason, I pray they'd follow the Holy Spirit's lead and come. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we sing, if you need to pray.
it is. 